four cylindrical parts mass produced before the CNC metal lathe? The answer is the turret lathe. Gavin Gear here for makingwithmetal.com. In this video, I wanted to give you kind of a quick tour of my approximately 1948 Warner Swassi number two turret lathe. Talk a little bit about what a turret lathe is and give you an overview of kind of the automotive style cosmetic restoration that I did. I did a, an acrylic urethane paint job on it and cleaned it up. So let's start with what exactly is a turret lathe? So a turret lathe is a metal lathe where cylindrical work is revolved and the tooling does not revolve as opposed to a milling machine where the tooling revolves and the work does not. But a turret lathe is geared towards repetitive operations. Let's say you wanted to make a whole bunch of bushings and you needed to drill a hole in a metal rod. You needed to turn down a shoulder and then part it off, for instance. On an engine lathe, that would involve several setups and a lot of change out of the work. We have to reclamp the work after the tooling has been changed or vice versa. Also, the tailstock on a conventional lathe does not have power feed and the turret lathe solves these problems. And there's really two types of turret lathes. There's saddle turret lathes, where literally there is a saddle with a turret on it and the turret spins. And then there's this type of turret lathe, which is a ram type turret lathe, where the ram is extended and retracted and the turret indexes each time. This is a six place turret, so it's hex and so that you can have six tools set up to do subsequent operations on the part that you're manufacturing. This kind of a machine also would typically use a bar feeder where you unclamp the work and then you can pull it through, through a system called a feeder, like a ratchet bar feeder or a electric or hydraulic feeder. The work is reclamped and then a series of operations is performed on the work. Here I've got it looks like five eighths round bar that I'm clamping with a collet. The collets are great because they hold the work concentrically and you can really quickly release and re-clamp the work. This machine has a five horsepower, three phase electric motor and I've got a rotary phase converter from American Rotary. I can turn that on, it's actually outside the building and run this machine up here in the mountains just as if we had a large shop with three phase power coming in off the pole. So I can start up the machine, I can do whatever it is that I'm gonna do, and then when I'm all done with my three phase equipment, which I have three large machines here that use, I just turn the rotary phase converter off for the day really good way to get three-phase power into a shop. I have the American Rotary AI20, it's 20 horsepower idler motor, so it's good for starting motors up to 10 horsepower. So that's really cool. So this machine came with a ratchet bar feeder, so I could have you know approximately 10 feet of bar material and I could subsequently make parts until that 10 feet of bar material was consumed and then insert another 10 foot piece. I have not assembled that, I haven't painted that, I think I'm even missing some parts, so I'm not quite uh, ready to go with that. In terms of the cosmetic restoration, this thing was really, really ugly. I mean really ugly. It had probably half to three quarter inch layer of just rusted together chips with kind of dried up machining oil on them and someone had done a really crusty paint job on it and it was coated with just probably 40, 50 years worth of gunge. And I didn't want to completely disassemble the machine. The goal was really to just get a fresh coat of primer and paint on it so that I could wipe it down and so that I can take pride in this machine and see things like the plaques better, that kind of thing. So I spent probably 20 hours with the wire bristle brush and super purple just removing layers of gunge and dried up oil and chips. I used a putty knife and scraped out this whole pan and, and then used lacquer thinner to do kind of a final degrease on it. Then it was time for final paint prep. Yeah, I used to work in an auto body shop and I did 
you know, prep and up to and including complete paint jobs. And I did pretty much the same thing here for this lathe that I did with the car. So I used, you know, high quality 3M masking tape to mask off everything and did kind of a two stage paint job on it with an epoxy primer and a polyurethane single base paint. So it didn't, it's not a base coat, clear coat. This is just an acrylic urethane paint that does not need a clear coat. I didn't want to go kind of overboard, but I used a PPG product that was a little bit below the Deltron class of urethanes that I used to use in the, in the body shop, and that has been holding up good. It's been a few months now, and it's had some chips sitting on it. It's had machining oil, uh, cutting fluid sitting on it, and it just wipes up really clean, and I absolutely love looking at the machine. Again, these brass plaques look quite a bit better, and it's just a real joy to use, and you know, in this day and age, it's still economical to own. When you think about a machine, I have a total of less than $1,000 into this. It's got a lot of great tooling with it. Um, if you're comparing that with CNC time, if you have really, really high quantities, sure, you can justify that, but for limited production run, Stuff that I need to do on this machine is just a great tool to have around. So, enough of the talk. Let's uh, do a machining operation and I'll show you exactly how this thing works. Okay, so I've got the rotary phase converter on. We can start the spindle and I'm gonna advance the depth stop here. We'll uncomp up the material, pull out the rod. This is just a setup that I'm experimenting with here. So this gets us out to the correct depth. Now we can start our spindle, we can add some, add some cutting fluid here. Okay, and first up is center drilling. So each time we're going to engage the tool, we have adjustable depth stops here. It's going to go ahead and kick off. Now we can do some drilling. Makes quick work of this stuff. Okay, now we've got a box tool. This is gonna turn the outside diameter down. Let's make sure our cutting block's all the way back here. Okay, and then this is kind of a cool tool here. This is a geometric thread cutting head. And what we need to do here is shift into our lower range. This is gonna be kind of like a uh, pipe threading machine. Okay, so we just start advancing it by hand and it's gonna keep cutting until we reverse directions. The jaws pop open. Very, very cool. Okay, so now it's time to part off our part. We're gonna go back to our high range and we'll get the tool position accordingly. Really rigid machine. Very pleasant for these kinds of processes. So there we go, a quick tour of my Warner Swassie number two turret lathe. I hope you enjoyed this quick demo and the story of how I did the cosmetic restoration. I'm really, really happy with how this machine turned out and it's a really valuable tool to have in the shop, even if these machines have been largely replaced by CNC lathes. It's just the way things are. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you don't want to miss any of the machining action, the metalworking action, the shooting and reloading action here on Gavin Tube, please subscribe to my channel. Until next time, happy machining. Thank <laughs> you.